Many consider the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent to be the epitome of the golden age of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans ruled over three continents. A new law code was put into effect. The arts were flourishing, and some of the greatest examples of Ottoman Turkish architecture were constructed at this time. Sinan was the chief court architect under Suleiman, Selim II, and Murad III. Sinan was born as a Greek Orthodox, somewhere in Anatolia between 1512 and 1520. He was taken up in the Devshirme, the child tribute tax, converted to Islam, and was conscripted into the Janissaries, the elite fighting corps of the Ottoman Empire. His Christian name is unknown. Sinan accompanied Suleiman's army on many expeditions in Europe and Anatolia and rose quickly in the ranks of the Janissaries. He served as a military engineer. Sinan was able to study many buildings from many eras in his wide-ranging travels. In 1538, he was appointed as chief court architect for Suleiman. He received a number of commissions from the Sultan's family. He is credited with having designed more than 400 structures in the lands of the Ottoman Empire. The Suleimania, the Mosque of Suleiman the Magnificent, was one of his finest. A large part of the inspiration for the Suleimania came from the ancient Byzantine church of Hagia Sophia. Mehmet II entered Constantinople on May 29, 1453. On that same day, he converted Hagia Sophia into a mosque. Hagia Sophia was designed and built in 532 to 537 during the reign of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I. The ground plan of Hagia Sophia, a central dome supported by a series of semi-domes and a large central nave flanked by narrower side aisles, is essentially that of the Suleimanie. Sinan did, of course, add a number of refinements. Sinan is thought to have added the first stone minaret to Hagia Sophia. Some believe he added the four flying buttresses to the western facade of the building. The Suleimania was built between 1550 and 1557. The Suleimania is the central feature of a massive complex of schools, hospices, tombs, and charitable institutions. The four minarets allude to the fact that Suleiman was the fourth sultan to rule from Istanbul and the ten balconies to the fact that he was the tenth sultan of the House of Osman, the founder of the Ottoman Turkish dynasty. Here we have the monumental entrance to the Suleimani. The atrium is flanked by four domed colonnades. In the center is a shardivan, a monumental fountain. The massive monolithic columns of the entrance portico were taken from the ruins of Constantinople's ancient Hippodrome. We find ourselves now in the interior of the Suleimani. The dome rests upon four great arches, which spring from four massive piers. The dome and arches are buttressed by half domes. We are looking now into the dome. The Qibla, the directional which points towards Mecca, lies flat against the wall, allowing for a maximum of unobstructed space in the interior of the mosque. There are 129 windows in the Suleimanie. The original stained glass windows are the work of Ibrahim the Sot. In this image, we see the half dome that buttresses the dome and one of the great arches. In this image, we see the dome and one of the half domes of the Suleimanie. 
Ablution fountains can be found along the side of the Sulaymaniyah. Cemeteries surround the mosque. These gravestones date from the Ottoman era. We are now at the Turbe or Mausoleum of Suleiman the Magnificent. The Mausoleum of Suleiman contains cenotaphs shown in red here of Sultan Suleiman in the center two other sultans, Suleiman II and Ahmed II, as well as that of his daughter Mirima and other relations. In the center we have the cenotaph of Suleiman the Magnificent. There are more Iznik tiles in the Turbe of Suleiman than there are in the mosque itself. The only wife of Suleiman was known in the West as La Rosa or Roxolana. The Turks knew her as Hurem, the Laughing One. The daughter of a Ukrainian priest, she was captured in a slave raid, sold on the slave market in Istanbul, and presented to the Sultan. She was the mother of Sultan Selim II. This is the mausoleum of Roxolana. The cenotaph of Roxolana can be seen in the foreground of this picture. These Iznik tiles decorate the mausoleum of Roxolana. Legend says that when Suleiman saw the finished mosque, he was so overwhelmed that he offered Sinan the opportunity to build an equally grand structure with Sinan's own name attached to it. Sinan declined the offer saying that to be buried beside the Suleimanie would be honor enough for him. The mausoleum of Sinan can today be seen beside the Suleimanie. This 19th century print shows the Suleimanie. <laughs>